that was pretty fast, maybe not under a minute, but uh, let's do another uh, quick demonstration of another effect that might be splinters from wood. You can always use your own uh, geometry instead of these, so this is just a rough generator type script. And uh, so let's do these ones for the splinters and have them be a bit more splinter like. So maybe something like this. I'll do the point emitter once again. And I'll do like this. Turn it down. And then we're going to have a big blast around frame 20. Again, we have to adjust the size. So I think we need a bit more speed as well. So as you can see, I have uh, generated another effect, uh, rocks piling up, which is also very fun. Uh, I'm going to talk to you through the uh, interface now, uh, a little more details. So you can see there are three different types of rocks that you can generate, rounded, a bit less rounded, and sharp ones. And you can decide how many you want to, how many you want the scripts to generate. But you could also use your own uh, geometry if you had something that you already built, like splinters or cereal cones or whatever. So to, to create the emitter, you would choose the geometry that you want to instance. So for instance, uh, these guys, and then I'll... So what you do is first you select your shards and then you push the button. If you want to use the curve emitter, then you would have to sh choose the shards first and then the curve. And then push the button, and the same thing for the geo. You have the an option to um, make the scaling uniform. So if you had like cereal that uh, couldn't have oblong shapes, then you would want to have uniform. You also can choose uh, instancing if you, for some particular reason, needed that. So next, you have some options. So this is for keyframing um, a blast. So it makes three keyframes: one zero, one a thousand, and one zero again for the rate so that makes you very fast create a blast next one is for creating a collider so that's just a shortcut for the Maya dynamics so I can choose an object and then make it a collider so next button is a parent debris control so because of all the particles and, and intricate stuff that you have in your setup you don't want to actually parent this to uh, say a character so instead, you have an option to use this parent constraint button that would um, create it in a way that the, the, the debris effect won't be disturbed. Next group here is for more pipeline stuff. So you have the option to bake your geometry or bake the sim out to geometry. 
and that actually also handles uh, particle deaths. So if you wanted to, if you have a lot of particles and you want to bake them, then it might be good that you have some collider underneath that um, uh, make them die when they go too far away from camera, so you don't have to bake that. And um, this one will uh, make sure that happens. You can use instance instead of just uh, geometry if you wanted to. Then you have the delete dynamics option, which I already showed. And that makes, deletes all these instances, uh, the particle groups, the emitter group, the gravity group, and then it um, makes, your, makes your scene ready for exporting or just making sure that you don't have um, unwanted stuff in your scene so you can export it for other purposes. So baking is very useful for also for rendering. If your renderer doesn't uh, support the instancing or the Maya particles or whatever, and also it makes it a lot easier to adjust, final, make final adjustments to your sim. So if there's a stray particle that you don't like, or if you want one particular particle to rotate in another way or die, then it's a lot easier when you have uh, the uh, baked geometry. So that one is for that. Uh, when you bake out the curves, uh, the script will automatically fix Euler type problems of the rotation, so you don't have to worry about that. The last option in the auto debris script is a copy animation. So that's actually for when you deleted all your stuff, but you still have your your um, your debris control and your scene. Then you have the option to regenerate it and then copy all the ins all the settings from this one to um, the one that you just created. So you could also use it as like a library of different. Um, of different types that you want. If you want like one, say like these sticky ones and you had another one that was more like exploding stuff or whatever, then you can actually just save the settings by saving the controller. So that's, uh, that's enough for the interface and next I will be talking about all these settings on the controller. Thank you. So let's have a look at all the attributes that we have on the debris controller. This uh, debris controller is for the sphere, so it has a bit different behavior than the point and the curve. As you can see, you gotta follow U to follow to emit in the U direction and the V direction of this sphere. Also, the away from axis works a bit different. So instead of being away from this axis, it's actually away from this arrow. So it's from the local point that they're they're born away from this arrow. So let's see what it works. So that makes it go away from this one. And you have the ability to also push in negative numbers if you needed that. So that's actually very handy and a tool that regular Maya emission from surfaces don't allow you. The follow U and the follow V is the direction, so all these adds up to the final direction. You also got to uh, follow normal, which is the normal of this surface. The rate uh, determines how many, um, the rate of, of the debris particles, so that's the one that you keyframe with a blast. The speed randomness makes, it, uh, makes you adjust how random the speed of the emission is. Then we got a special one called stray share. Uh, if you notice, uh, maybe we'll push this one down away from axis. Set it along axis. So that's fine. Yeah, what happens is that some of the particles will travel a lot further than the rest. And that is determined by the stray share. So if I wanted to have fewer than these, I would higher the number. If I have every second one be very fast, then I'll adjust here. So now we have a lot of stray particles to add some realism to your shot. This one determines how much further the stray particles will go. So this is the minimum size of the rocks and the maximum size of the rocks. 
Um, so it will have a random size in between those, and if you set them to uniform, then the uniform will be then they will be scaled uniformly. Otherwise, they will have random scale in x, y, and z. The Gauss factor makes uh, makes the scale of the particles a little bit more realistic. So the higher this number, the the fewer you will have of very big um, big particles. So if you have linear distribution, that's actually not how nature works. So in nature, you would tend to have more a uh, higher number of smaller particles per big one. So this one is is a pretty good number. So, so the rotation lets you um, set how much rotation they should have when they are born. Rotation damping is for yeah for also for realism. Then you got uh, rotation size compensate, which means that bigger particles will tend to rotate a bit slower than than smaller ones. Gravity is self-evident and lets you control how much gravity. And you got show volume, which is actually a small volume emitter here, so you can turn that on if you want to scale on it. Collide is on, which makes them collide with the geometry below here. Then you got self-collision that you can turn on and off. Um, self-collision tends to add some some more randomness since they at birth they will collide with each other and make the directions more random. Then you got uh, bounds, which you can set if you want to create more bouncy collisions. Then you got stickiness to allow them to stick together and also stick to other surfaces, if, especially if these surfaces are also set to be sticky. Then you got some damping, and finally you got solve on and off, which um, it's automatically turned off when you do the baking. So once you bake the sim, if you wanted to keep on working with the, the emitter, you have to turn this on again, and then you can keep baking and, and thereby creating uh, more particles in your scene with the same emitter. So as you can see, you have lots of lots of different um, attributes that let you control how to adjust your scene for the particular purpose that you have. So enjoy.